Hello kiddos, welcome back to Math in Minutes. In this video, we are going to learn how our angles formed and figure out the different types of angles. Before we start discussing what is an angle, let's look at some slides picturing the different types of angles in real life. Please observe the highlighted parts of given figures. First one is pizza. Second one is basketball court. And third one is slide. By now you might have got some idea about what an angle is. Come on kids, any guesses? How do we define an angle? The word angle comes from the Latin word angulus which means corner. An angle can be defined as the space between two intersecting lines. An angle can also be defined as a geometrical shape formed by joining two rays at their end points. The point where the two rays meet is called vertex of an angle. The two rays are called arms of an angle. How do you name an angle? Now let's learn procedure to name an angle. There are two different ways to name the angles. First one is give a name to the angle. Generally the angle is named using the lowercase letter like A, X or by using the Greek letters alpha, beta. Here in this example I named the angle with lowercase letter A. So we will write angle A equal to 60 degrees. Here on the screen the angle is formed by joining two rays AB and BC. The two rays meet at common point B which is called vertex. The second way to label an angle is by using the three letters which are used to represent the angle and the middle letter should be the vertex. For example ABC is an angle. To represent the angle B equal to 60 degrees we can represent as angle ABC equal to 60 degrees. Now let's discuss the best way to name an angle one letter naming convention like this angle a i mean angle a is equal to 60 degrees this type of method is convenient but not preferred because look at this angle here naming this type of angle with one letter b like one letter b doesn't make any sense because vertex b has more than one angle here angle pqs and sqr so if you say angle b then we will not know which angle we are talking about so it is always best to practice to name the angle with three letter words like angle p q s or angle s q or We use something called protractor to measure an angle. This is how the protractor looks like. The numbers on the protractor are called degrees. Degrees are the units in which we measure angle. The protractor have two scales marked on it. Outer scale and inner scale. The outer scale starts from 0 degrees and goes up to 180 degrees in clockwise direction. And the inner scale also has the same range but in anti-clockwise direction. Now 
Now let's learn to measure angle A, B, C. For that we need geometrical instrument name protractor. Protractor has two scales. First one is inner scale running from 0 to 180 degrees. The other one is outer scale. Same it also measures from 0 degrees to 180 degrees but in opposite directions. It has one central point. This is the central point of the protractor. First step, place the central point of the protractor on the vertex B. You have to ensure that the zero line, this is the zero line of the protractor. The zero line of the protractor should coincide with the one arm of the angle, say here, ray BC. Step 2, you have to count from 0 on the right side. This is uh, 0 on the right side. You have to count from this 0 until the degree line that coincides with the ray AB. So, let's count 0, 10, 20, 30. So, 30 degrees is the measure of my angle. So, we can write as angle ABC is equal to 30 degrees or angle C B A equal to 30 degrees. The vertex showing the angle should be in the middle. What are the different types of angles? In maths, there are mainly six types of angles based on size of the angle. Now, what is the size of the angle? Size of the angle depends upon how much the arms are opened out. An angle in which the arms are opened out more is bigger than an angle in which arms are opened less. These six angle types are the most common ones used in geometry. They are acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle, straight angle, reflex angle, full rotation angle. Acute angles are angles that measure less than 90 degrees. Acute angles are often referred to as sharp or pointed angles because they resemble the point of a needle. These angles are typically associated with sharp or angular objects such as a triangle or a pyramid. A pair of open scissors and the base of a cone look like an acute angle. Also, as shown on the screen, the slide also makes one acute angle with the ground. A right angle is an angle that is exactly equal to 90 degrees. A right angle is hence called a 90 degree angle. We can see many real life examples of the right angle in our day to day life. For example, the corner of a book or edges of the cupboards. Any shape that is square or rectangle will have its corners equal to 90 degrees or right angle. An angle that measures more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees is called an obtuse angle. As shown on the screen, the angle formed by the hour and minute hands of a clock at 4 o'clock and the inclination at which pool chairs are bent look like an obtuse angle. A straight angle is defined as an angle that is equal to 180 degrees. The reason it is called a straight angle is because it appears as a straight line. Some of straight angle examples in our day to day life are the ruler which we use and a fully opened book. 
an angle equal to 360 degrees is called full rotation or full angle it is formed when one of the arms takes a complete rotation to form an angle when a second's hand completes a full circle around the clock face it forms an angle that measures 360 degrees so far we have learned acute angle right angle obtuse angle straight angle and full rotation angle there is one more last angle left for discussion kids can you guess what is the type of angle which measures more than straight angle and less than full angle oh yeah you are right reflex angle is the one that measures more than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees when a piece of pizza is cut from the whole pizza the remaining part of the pizza forms a reflex angle the exterior angle of the letter v also forms a reflex angle kids i hope you know now what angles are but let me ask you one last question why do we need angles where do we apply the concept of angles carpenters use angles to measure precisely to build doors chairs tables angles are also found in everyday objects such as scissors and ladders angles are important in the design and construction of buildings roads and bridges i hope you enjoyed learning six types of angles with me this is a quick recap of what we have learned so far on the way to your school observe the different types of constructions around us and identify the importance of knowing different types of angles when constructing houses temples and schools i hope you learned something new in this video thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to math in minutes